Good Tuesday afternoon to you. I hope you are having a great day. It is NFL cut down day. We'll tell you the Browns cuts, what the 53-man roster looks like, and how it may change. Tim Bielek will join us a, a little later in the show. Uh, we begin by uh, talking football with Jeff Phelps, but let's go through these cuts. So, on the defensive line, the Browns have uh, waived Porter Gustin, Curtis Weaver, Marvin Wilson, Cameron Malvo, Sheldon Day, Joe Jackson. Linebackers, T. Gray Scales, Elijah Lee, Willie Harvey. Defensive backs, Sheldrick Redwine, Javante Moffitt, Elijah Benton, Brian Allen, Manny Ragamba. Offensive linemen, Javon Patterson, Colby Gossett, Alex Taylor from Injured Reserve. Running backs, Johnny Kelly, fullback Johnny Stanton, tight end Jordan Franks, Kyle Markway. Wide receivers, Cardale Hodge, JoJo Natson, Jamarcus Bradley. Quarterback, Kyle Lawletta. Uh, sent to Injured Reserve, Greg Sennett, Drew Forbes. Uh, reserve suspended list by the commissioner, wide receiver Davion Davis. Let's welcome in Jeff Phelps from 92.3 The Fan and the Browns Radio Network halftime and postgame shows. Uh, Jeff, no huge surprises, but a couple of guys that can definitely play involved in um, those cut downs to get to 53. We're in a different place, aren't we, Dave? All of a sudden, the Browns, you know, you're debating fifth, sixth guys at positions. There were a couple of things that stood out to me. Number one, on the defensive line, right now, and this, this will change, we can be sure of this, they got rid of Cameron Malvo, they got rid of Joe Jackson, which I was surprised at, they got rid of Porter Gustin, which surprised me. I, I had to figure Jackson or Gustin was going to make the team. So they have three defensive ends right now. And we love Miles Garrett. Tack McKinley was not really participating in camp for a while, and Jadavion Clowney, love him, has an injury of histories. Our, our, our history of injuries. Maybe you sh I should put my reading glasses on while I talk. It'll help. He has a uh, history yeah, mine of injuries. Here too. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. So that to me is something that I, I think we'll see somebody added at defensive end. And because, you know, this is just the cut down to 53. Now you start tweaking. And then I, I wonder about wide, wide receiver a little bit. Kaderil Hodge, I thought, was, was pretty darn good in the preseason. I think he's been pretty good for the Browns. He's also good on special teams. It's interesting because now they have five wide receivers in a league where you throw the ball like crazy. Even the Browns, you know, who have great running backs. But all of a sudden, Anthony Schwartz is your fifth wide receiver. That's okay. Can he, can he play? Can he be healthy? Let's find out. I wouldn't be surprised if they add a sixth wide receiver there. But you have Demetrik Felton, who can line up at wide receiver. So that gives you some versatility. Maybe they actually like him more at receiver than at running back because they kept four running backs, and that probably cost Kaderil Hodge his job, at least in the short term, because Felton can slide out there and play a little receiver for you. Yeah, and keep in mind, um, now once the 53-man roster gets official and everybody clears waivers, they can put guys on short-term IR and then bring back yeah. some of these guys. So candidates for short-term IR would definitely be uh, Jacob Phillips. He's got that bicep yeah. injury. He's going to miss probably at least the first five, six, seven games. Also, Michael Dunn, offensive lineman uh, who's been banged up, so they could bring back a couple of those guys. The other thing that's important to remember about Hodge, he was making like $2.3 million. If by some strange um, fact there that he gets through, they can bring him back at like a fourth-year minimum, which saves them over a million dollars. I don't think that's likely. I think somebody claims Kaderil Hodge because he's that good. He's looked good, and, and what a way to endear yourself to your player. Hi, we've cut you. We'd like to have your back, and we want to pay you 50%. You know, so that that's a tough that's a tough way to go. I just think he's the type of guy who can help your football team. But Dave, this is this is weird for all of us because here we sit talking about guys who are you know fifth, sixth guys at a position, and and that's a different world. So I hope they bring him back. If they don't. We're talking about the fifth or sixth guy at a position. Yeah. And same thing with, with Porter Gustin and with Joe Jackson. I wouldn't be surprised if one of those guys is back and maybe even two. I, I don't know. But right now they have eight defensive linemen, three ends, five tackles. And there is some flexibility with, you know, you've got guys that can bounce outside with Malik Jackson, but I don't know that, I don't know that you want to play him there more than four or five snaps um, per game. Um, the other report that we're hearing is that 
Uh, Nick Mullins, quarterback that has 16 NFL starts under his belt the last yeah. two years with the 49ers, will be brought in um, to the practice squad. Now, uh, practice squad quarterback with 16 NFL starts is pretty good. Um, he was uh, – the, the numbers are pretty good as well. You know, he's uh, 387 of 600. That's like just under 65%. F over 4,700 yards. The concerning thing that, you know, you got to coach out of him, 25 touchdowns, 22 interceptions. But, again, this is a guy who has yeah. started 16 NFL games in the uh, Kyle Shanahan offensive system, which the Browns run a version of. And Dave Mullins is a guy. Now, he didn't have a lot of wins, but I don't think you blame that on the quarterback with what was going on with the Niners. They were trying to build some things. He had a 400-yard passing game. He's got, I think, three 300-yard passing games in his career. He just doesn't have a lot of wins. I like the guy. I, I thought he played pretty well when he, when he was with San Francisco. And, you know, he's got, if you went to Southern Miss, he has a little Brett Favre style to him. I mean, he's, he's aggressive, and that led to some interceptions. If he's your practice squad quarterback, you're in great shape. And I, I wonder, uh, we talked about this on the fan today, I wonder, does that mean an option next year when Case Keenum could be out? You know, he has an option in his contract. The Browns have an option for next year. He's making a lot of money. If Baker Mayfield gets signed to an ungodly contract, which if Baker signs a contract, it will be, do you want to you want to be paying your backup quarterback, which you have to pay Case Keenum, or would you rather pay a guy like Nick Mullins? You know, can you coach him up enough where you think he can do what Case Keenum does for you? I prefer Case right now. You know, I think he's he's one of the best backup quarterbacks in the NFL. And if you have Super Bowl aspirations, you want that. But Nick Mullins as your third guy on the practice squad, that's that's a, a really nice move for your organization. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even if Case Keenum comes back, you, you keep developing um, Nick yeah. Mullins. And if you can show enough in preseason – and you still want to keep Case Keenum next year, you, then mm -hmm. you got something that people want. Yep. All right. Yep, absolutely. So Albert Breer, uh, Monday morning quarterback, says the Browns are taking mm -hmm. calls for Mac Wilson. Uh, let's go through that. Uh, so I'll be one of the guys calling. So Andrew Barry, right, I'd like to talk about Mac Wilson. You be Andrew Barry. All right. Terrific. What do you have in mind? We, we really like Mac a lot here in Cleveland. Well, how about a, a fourth or a, uh, eh, maybe a fifth or sixth round pick? Hmm. You have a third available to me? If you have a third, he's yours right now. Yeah, I think those are the kinds of conversations that are going on, if yeah. there are any conversations. Yeah. I think the Browns were clearly impressed with Mac Wilson and the way he came in, uh, ready to improve the things he needed to. And then he got banged up in one of the preseason games. But I think they're happy with Mac Wilson. Would you agree? Um, I'm not completely sure about that, Dave. But if I'm the Browns, I want to see a lot more of Mac Wilson before I trade him to somebody for anything that would be, I would think, normal trade consideration, which would be a fourth or a fifth. And, and to be honest, I'd rather have a look at him than, a third, than get a third-round pick in return. I, I always remember what Nick Saban said when Mac came out, and that was that Mac came out a year too early and that he should have stuck around Alabama for another year, worked on his game a little bit, and it would have been better off. So if, if Nick's right about that, his rookie season should have been in college, which means last year should have been his rookie season, which means, boy, we could see some real improvement here in year number three. I think that, that's my hope for him. That's my hope for him. I think the other thing about Mac Wilson, we kind of downplay. He was banged up all year. You know, he got hurt early and, yeah. and got back on the field basically because the Browns needed him to. Yeah, I, I like the guy, Dave. And I, you know, I clearly Anthony Walker is going to start for you in the middle. And Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa, if he's not starting in week one, will be starting soon enough. What happens on that other side? You know, is, is Taki Taki your guy? Are you going to go with Mac Wilson? What are you going to do? I think there's time to split it up on the depth chart. Uh, Owusu Koromoa is listed on the same side as Mac Wilson. And if Mac Wilson can step it up and show the show the Browns that he should be playing all the time, if, if, that's, if he's able to do that, you have Wilson on one side, JOK on the other, all of a sudden you have a, a different, young, dynamic linebacking core that I, I 
really, really be interested in seeing on the field on a regular basis. Jeff Phelps from 92.3 The Fan and uh, the Browns Radio Network. Uh, we're going to step aside, take a quick time out on the other side of the break. Uh, we'll look at the 53-man roster as it currently stands. Um, we'll also talk about what the biggest strengths and areas of concern are. Sports for CLE will be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. Back to new friends, new classroom, and learning new things. Back to wearing shoes, man, like real shoes. Back to rushing to class. Back to having questions. Lots of questions. Back to vending machine dinners. Back to too much caffeine. Too late at night. But feeling like it was a night well spent. Back to pursuing your dreams and taking control of your future. Come back to go forward. Try C, where futures begin. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Sports for CLE continues. We continue talking Browns on cut down day. The Browns have made their cuts, and um, we are talking with Jeff Phelps from 92.3 The Fan, Browns uh, Radio Network, halftime and post game shows. Let's take a look at the Browns offense, 53 man roster as it currently stands. There will be some tweaks. You see the quarterbacks, no surprise. Dearness Johnson and Demetric Felton listed um, as a running back, just one fullback. Only three tight ends, that's another area they could look to as a fourth tight end. Only five wide receivers, ten, count them, ten offensive linemen. As I mentioned earlier, Michael Dunn, potential candidate for short-term IR, which would mean he'd miss at least three weeks. So, Jeff, when you look at that, what jumps out about that, um, that roster? What do you see um, when we look at the offensive side of the ball? The ten offensive linemen surprised me a little bit. Yeah, I, I think that's the thing, Dave. And if, if Dunn goes to the IR... That takes care of it. Normally, teams don't carry ten offensive linemen, so that would that would take care of that. And then you see what happens. Unfortunately, you know, by the time some of the guys who get put on IR are ready to come off, other guys are going to be out. That's that's just the nature of the game. So that surprises me a little bit. The five wide receivers, a little a little bit, but again, it goes back to Demetric Felton. What do they really think of Felton? Because if for him to get on the field at running back, Dave, I, I don't know exactly how they're going to pull that off when you have to get your carries for Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. And Dearness Johnson's pretty good. So I would think that Felton is going to be doing a lot of different things. And they may actually think of him more as a wide receiver than a running back, in which case you have six guys that can line up at wide receiver. Yeah, you know, the, the, the thing is, is they motioned him out and threw the ball to him. And again, that's kind of Kevin Stefanski's M.O. If you can line him up in the backfield and, and identify a linebacker on him, covering him, pah, they'll, take, they'll take that every day, all day, every day. Yeah, and you know, the guy looks, he looks intriguing at the very least. I want to see more of him. I want to, but are we going to get a chance to do that? You know, with, with Kareem and Nick, okay, how many opportunities is he going to get? You know, how many is is uh, Dearness Johnson going to get? I think in his first two years, Dearness has something like 40 NFL carries. And he's averaging over five yards a carry. He can he can do the job. I, I, I actually like him. But he's playing behind Chubb and Hunt, you know, two guys who are about as good as you get at that position. So, we're, we're, again, we're, we're talking about spots 
that if these guys end up playing a significant role, it's because something went wrong. So I, I think we all need to kind of keep that in mind about this. The other thing is, would you be surprised if they added a, a fourth tight end? They like to play two tight end sets. One of those guys gets banged yeah. up. Carlson was there last year, mm -hmm. and he he was hurt. So I I don't I don't know. And, and the only reason I say that, if you're going to play two tight end sets, you'll still have one guy standing over on the sidelines. So maybe they just play the heck out of these three guys and and wait and see how that plays out and know that they could probably go get a tight end who could come in and help them out if they decide to do that. All right. that's, that's why I thought Johnny Stanton might have an outside chance of unseating Andy Janovich for that fullback spot because Stanton lined up at tight end a little bit in the preseason. So he, I, I don't, and that didn't happen. You know, they didn't, they didn't cut Andy Janovich and keep uh, Johnny Stanton. I would think Stanton's a guy they probably hope they can get back on the practice squad. Um, he yeah. was, you know, he was intriguing as a, as a ball carrier as well. They they lined him up and gave him the mm -hmm. football some. Um, clearly, he can play fullback, and they used him as a, as a tight end. So, I, yeah, I, that's a guy like Felton. You know, if if you can get yeah. him and develop him, um, it gives you some roster flexibility. Let's take a yep. look at defensive side of the ball, and, and um, again, we'll we'll kind of go through it the way we did with the offense. So, the defensive linemen, there are eight of them. Uh, you see him, you know, Malik McDowell has looked terrific. Um, Tack McKinley hadn't been on the field. Uh, Togi I will be interesting, um, the rookie. Seven linebackers, which is a little bit of a surprise, but I think Jacob Phillips could be a candidate for short-term IR. Um, ten, yeah. ten DBs as well um, it is a little bit of a surprise. And, and you see the specialists down there. On the defensive side of the ball, What I, we kind of touched on it. Three quote unquote defensive ends. Are you surprised there's seven linebackers there? Uh, as you mentioned, Dave, with Phillips being uh, injured, and you know, that biceps injury can be a nasty one that, that could last a long time. The fact that they didn't put him on IR already, though, is, is a great sign for maybe coming back late in the season. And you know, he's like Mac Wilson, you want to see what he can do. I'm really intrigued about Jacob Phillips, he, he could be he could be fun. And so we'll, we'll see what he's able to do if he's able to come back. And because they didn't already put him on IR, you would assume that he can at some point. So we'll see. But uh, a lot of DBs, I'm a little concerned about the DBs only because let's see Greedy Williams out there. Let's see Grant Delpit out there and, and see you know how healthy they're able to be this year. And my hope is that they're both in great shape and, and ready to go because they'll make, they'll make that defensive backfield really, really deep. I mean, that'll, that'll be that'll be terrific. And so if that's the case, that's that's outstanding. And then on the defensive line, you've got, a, uh, you know, only three defensive ends. That's going to change. So we'll see what they do there. All right. And, and from practice today, JOK is practicing. So we're able to get the helmet on over the stitches. Delpit, Greedy Williams, Taki Taki, Treader, Higgins not practicing. So again, um, obviously concerns with Delpit and Greedy. We'll get into them in a, in a minute. What do you think the biggest strength? So the 53-man roster, biggest strengths um, of it right now as it, as it is constituted, and it will get tweaked some. Offensive line and running backs. I think those are your two spots where you think are, uh, and, you know, and tight end, actually. I think, I think you're real solid at tight end. I don't think you have, uh, I don't think you have a perennial pro bowler at tight end but I think you have three guys who can who can play the game for you. But I would say offensive line and running back are the two spots, Dave, that you just think, yep, we're really good to go there. I think the wide receivers are uh, solid. If Odell comes back and plays like even he did when he was healthy here, I think they go from solid to being good. And if he can do what he used to do in New York, they go from you know, good to being really good. And so I'm, I'm anxious to see Odell out there and hopefully, hopefully we see the Odell that we saw in New York for the first three years when, when he was a giant. And I love Jarvis. Um, Donovan Peoples-Jones could make a jump, Richard Higgins. I just kept thinking all off season, they might add somebody to that group of, of an available free agent or something like that. They didn't do that. And, and now they get rid of Kadero Hodge, at least in the short term. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that position group's gonna play out. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think one of the things with Hodge, 
Um, I think they really like what Donovan Peoples-Jones has done. And, and you, you look at Peoples-Jones and then Higgins, who has that chemistry, it would have been tough for mm -hmm. Hodge to get on the field. Um, biggest areas of concern, what areas, when you look at that 53-man, do you go, hmm? Right now, defensive end, you know, I, they have five tackles. I'm assuming that, you know, you can find three of them that can play pretty well and rotate, you know, rotate them a little bit. But with only three guys at defensive end, something clearly is going to, to happen there. And I, I wonder if it's Porter Gustin. I wonder if it's Joe Jackson. I thought, I thought Joe Jackson was really pretty good and every time we've seen him for the Browns. And I would, if I had to bet your money, Dave, <laughs> I would bet that Joe Jackson is the guy that gets brought back and put on this team. And if not, then I would bet it's Porter Gustin I would be surprised if it's somebody from outside the organization, would you? Because I think those two guys played pretty well for the Browns. And so that that's why I wouldn't look outside the organization, except you cut both of those guys. Right. And, you know, I, it to me it seemed like every time I, I was watching Porter Augustin and, and when he was on the field, you always saw him making a play. He was just a guy yeah. that it wasn't anything – Flashy, it's like, okay, he got his hands up, he knocked that down, he, he ran and, and made a tackle on you know, the, side, the other sideline. He just was always in on the play. So I, that would be the guy I would think would come back, but if you said it was Joe Jackson, I, I don't think that would surprise me either. There's nobody that I saw, and, and I haven't looked, I haven't got a, a look at it at 4 o'clock, obviously. There's no big name that I saw that was a young guy like a, like a Tack McKinley where I, you know, I thought, eh, somebody yeah. quit on him. Let's let's see if the Browns can go and get let's him. Let's go get, get him, yeah. I, I Maybe they find somebody like that. I would assume that one of those two guys is coming back. And, heck, Dave, maybe even try and get one of them on the practice squad. And I thought Cameron Malvo, you know, was okay for the Browns. So I maybe he's a practice squad candidate. Jeff Phelps and I uh, from 92.3 The Fan and uh, the Browns Radio Network. We're going to step aside, take a quick time out. On the other side of the break, um, who does James Jones, former NFL player, think is the biggest threat to the Chiefs uh, to get to the Super Bowl? We'll talk about that. Plus, areas of the Browns roster they may look to upgrade. Sports for CLE will be right back. Stay with us. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. We continue talking Browns football with uh, Jeff Phelps, 92.3 The Fan, Browns Radio Network. All right, let's uh, – NFL's total access, uh, James Jones, biggest threat to the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC. Even with Josh Allen possibly being an MVP candidate, no. It is Bake Bake and the Brownies, I believe, is the biggest threat to the Kansas City Chiefs. It's Bake Bake and the Brownies. They are going to be able to play big-time defense. You got Miles Garrett. You got Clowney over there. They can cover on the back end. This team is going to be scary. And then you got this fella right here coming back, OBJ, already with a two-headed monster in the backfield in the run game with Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. You have his brother over there, Jarvis Juice Landry. Hey, I'm saying a lot of this, and a lot of this is on paper, but Baker Mayfield and the Browns, if they put it together, they are going to be the biggest threat to the Kansas City Chiefs. And I will not be surprised if these playoffs are possibly coming through the dog pound. Let's bring back in Jeff Phelps. And, Jeff, when you look at that, he's saying Browns could potentially have the, uh, the home field advantage as well. Um, it, the pieces are there. They have to go out on the field and do it. We've talked about this before. That's great that Bake Bake and the Brownies are going to be so good. I like that. <laughs> um, I think he makes a real valid point, Dave. I, this, this team is, is loaded. We know that. The one thing that James said that I don't know that I agree with yet is he said how good the defense is going to be. Man, I sure hope so. And they sure spent a lot of money on the defense this year. 
But until that defense goes out and stops somebody, I'm not going to immediately think we have a, a, a great defense. I, I Don't we have to see it first? I mean, there's so many new guys. Let's see what Joe Woods' idea of a defense really is. You know, let's see what this group looks like out on the field together. And, and let's see what they do against a team like Kansas City. Are they going to play good defense? Or are they going to get shredded? Um, let's find out uh, before we anoint this as a, a terrific defense. All right. Well, we'll let me ask you this. Do you think that the Browns um, get much this year from Grant Delpit and Greedy Williams? I, they're guys that can't seem mm. to, to stay on the field for, for a significant part of time. Are, are you concerned about that? Well, let me ask you this. Do they need to get a lot out of Grant Delpit and Greedy Williams. And, and the only reason I say that, because I'm I'm with you, Dave, I'm a little concerned. This goes back to kind of what I said earlier, until those guys get out on the field and, and play, I'm not going to count on them. But I like, I like the safety position. I, I think Ronnie Harrison's terrific. They brought in John Johnson and uh, Richard LeCount was terrific in the, uh, in the preseason. He looks like a real steal in, a fi- in the fifth round. So then you put Delpit back there. Okay, let's see what Grant can do. And if Grant can play better than any one of those three guys, then you you really have something there. But he's he's coming back from a lot, and he's dealing with that what the hamstring injury now, after coming back from his Achilles. That that's going to be rough. And that you know he might be one of those guys that okay, your first year back, you're still not all the way back. And and you hear that a lot about an ACL, but I would assume the same thing might hold true with an Achilles injury. First year back, you're getting back. Second year back, you're good to go. So maybe that's the case with him. We'll find out. Um, Greedy Williams, uh, my my fingers are crossed that you know his shoulder situation isn't something that affects him for his entire career. Uh, well, until I see him out on the field, until you see him, until we all see him out on the field and doing what it is he was brought here to do, I don't know that we can you know think that we have to have this guy. But but think about this. You drafted Greg Newsom and you signed Troy Hill. So even if Greedy comes back at the best, what is he, your third corner? I, I would think. I, I think Greg Newsom's going to start. Denzel's terrific. So well, well, what do you need Greedy Williams to do for you? I would think be your fourth corner at this point. That's fair enough. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the good news is, is they were not counting, you know, quote unquote, counting on both of those guys to step in and assume major roles. Um, right. I agree. Is it concerning to you, though, that you have all these new pieces on defense that you've brought in that are really talented and they haven't been able to even get on the practice field together and, and kind of work yeah. on the mechanics? And I know they did everything virtually last year, but there's something to be said for full speed communication, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Does it concern yeah. you? Yeah, it does. And that's. Oh, having a little trouble, and uh, we'll see if we can we'll see if we can get uh, Jeff back and talk about, about that, Dave. Oh, there we go. So, so the concern the concern well, with don't the... ask me why this thing mutes itself. <laughs> it does. And I'm not doing it. I promise you. It's all right. Better now. I, I like that does, button. I, I need that button over here, but that's all right. I I, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> the the defense. Um, I, I, yeah, it does concern me. And it was for the reasons we talked about. What does Joe Woods want to do on defense? He wants to be aggressive. I, I don't know. He wants to be aggressive. Yeah, well, and he wants to blitz some. We, we think so, we, we, don't we? I mean, we think so. Yeah. But we have to see it. And last year he tried to be aggressive, and man, he didn't. He didn't have players to work with last year. Everybody was getting beat up. Miles is out with COVID. Miles came back, and he wasn't the same guy. And it, how could he have been? You know, he was really affected by that. He was playing at an MVP level before that. Um, I want to see Joe Woods with a with a healthy defensive roster, and I want to see what it is he wants to do on defense. And I I want to see Ronnie Harrison with with Johnson in the back. I want to see I want to see Grant Delpit back there. Who are they going to put a linebacker? Is it JOK? I, Dave, I still think you have two real questions at linebacker. You have Anthony Walker in the middle. What else do you have? Let's find out the answers to those things. Tack McKinley is supposed to be a key member of the team. We haven't seen Tack at all. So what, what's going to happen with him? Is Clowney going to stay healthy? Who else do you bring in? I think at defensive end, 
So there, there are questions to be answered. But I, I'm really, I'm, I'm really optimistic that it can be a really good defense because from an individual standpoint, the guys you brought in have great track records on the pro level and great pedigrees coming out of college. So I, I truly am optimistic about it, and I think they'll be pretty good. But until we actually see it, I don't think we, I don't think it's fair to say, oh, we've taken care of that defensive problem. Yeah, I, I again, I, I think that's very valid and very fair. Before we go to break, an under the radar guy that you think will have an impact early. So not not somebody mm -hmm. that's a, a big flashy name, somebody that kind of pay attention to and that you think can make an impact. Is Donovan Peoples Jones a big flashy name? Nope. Or does he qualify? He qualifies. He, he absolutely qualifies. qualifies. Yeah. Okay. I, I think he might be the guy. He's big. He's strong. Um, he's a different type of receiver than Odell and Jarvis. And though I like Hollywood Higgins, if Donovan Peoples Jones can become the number three receiver on this team, or if unfortunately Odell's not ready to go right at the start of the season, and we don't know if that's the case or not yet, uh, I think Donovan Peoples Jones could be that guy. And he could give Baker Mayfield a different, even if Odell's back, a different kind of threat at the wide receiver spot. So he's the guy I'm really looking for. And and maybe this is the year, Dave, that David Njoku really, really kind of gets back to where he was early on. You know, it's it's kind of intriguing. I think those are two really big red zone targets for Baker Mayfield. Too. Yeah. That yeah. something. I agree. I think, you know, he didn't really have those, you know, and again, nothing against Beckham and Landry. Those aren't the, the tall targets that you can find inside. Right. Yep. That's exactly that throw has been missing. I think Harrison Bryant can be that guy too. And Harrison Bryant's a, a good receiver at tight end, really good receiver at tight end. And so that that's maybe phase two of the Stefanski offense. What happens here in year number two? with this group you know do they put in different types of plays in that situation to take advantage of the size of a guy like donovan peoples jones or like njoku or like bryant or you, you know we didn't see that that fade in the end zone that odell was famous for in new york with eli manning very much and odell wasn't there for a good part of the season so that, that's another part of this thing that, that i think we're gonna have to pay attention to and on the other hand if you're in the red zone and you have Nick Chubb, why do you want to throw? <laughs> so it, it, it's the evolution of this offense. Where are we where are we going to see it? And I, Dave, I I can't remember. I think the last time that any of us should have been this excited about a season was when Bernie Kosar was a quarterback and he was handing off to Mack and Biner and throwing to Langhorn and Slaughter and Brian Brennan. I, it's been that long. Yeah, and, and you know what? We just lost anybody that's under 45 years old uh, because they've never heard those <laughs> names. Jeff, Jeff Phelps and I are going to step aside and take a quick timeout. On the other side of the break, uh, what do you expect from Baker Mayfield in year two? Same players and the same system. We'll talk about that when Sports for CLE continues. Stay with us. Welcome back. Back to new friends, new classroom, and learning new things. Back to wearing shoes, man, like real shoes. Back to rushing to class. Back to having questions, lots of questions. Back to vending machine dinners. Back to too much caffeine, too late at night, but feeling like it was a night well spent. Back to pursuing your dreams and taking control of your future. Come back to go forward. Try C, where futures begin. We continue talking Browns with Jeff Phelps, 92.3 The Fan, Browns Radio Network. Um, Jeff, year two of Baker Mayfield in the same offensive system with the same personnel. Mm -hmm. um, we only saw two series. First series, maybe a little disjointed against the Falcons. Second series, boy, did he look sharp, and, and he just it yeah. looked like second nature to him. Do you expect a big jump in year two? I hope for a big jump in year two. How's that? And, and you know, David, it's almost, I won't say it's an unfair situation to Baker, but I think it, there's so much talent on this offense that I don't know if he even, if he makes that big jump that you talked about, I don't know if he even gets the credit for it because 
you know, you have Nick Chubb behind you. You have Kareem Hunt. Give him the football. That's easy. You have Jarvis and Odell, two really good wide receivers. Get them the football. And I, it might be such a – and your offensive line is as good as it gets in the NFL. So you might be quarterbacking a team that is so stacked that you don't get the credit for it. And, and not that he – all he's going to care about is wins. And, you know, you hear him talk, and that's pretty clear. However, I think if he can make that jump and play like he did at the end of last season – all year round, I, th- I think this this offense will be pretty special, and I think he will be too. One thing to remember, um, remember when Hugh Jackson was here, and then the shakeup happened, and then Freddie Kitchens took over as offensive coordinator. Baker was really good in the second half of that season when Freddie took over. And then last year, he was really good in the second half of the season. And... I'm ready for Baker. You're ready for Baker. Everybody's ready for Baker to be good all season long. And Baker's more ready for that than anybody. So I, I hope he hits the ground because it is, and you pointed it out, Dave, it's the second year in the same system. That should pay huge dividends um, because the first year in the Stefanski system took a little while to get used to. And then the, the other year when, you know, when Freddie was here, all right, that was a bit of an adjustment. You know, when, when he was a rookie with Freddie as offensive coordinator. So, I would think your number two, Baker is really, uh, under Stefanski, he's really ready to roll. And I I think this offense is going to start humming right from the start of the season, Dave. I don't don't expect any kind of a warm-up period. I think they're good to go. Yeah, I I would think so. And and I think he's poised to have a big year. We'll we'll see. Again, until they go out and do it, can't really say much. All right, Bleacher Report. Um, And it was a buying or selling – Mm. article that they had and it said baker and odell are poised to find chemistry bleacher report buying it are you buying it jeff phelps sure i am and i i've thought that I've, I've thought two things i've never seen anything from odell other than that he wants to win and does he want the football sure i mean that's what he's he's there to catch passes jarvis wants the football nick chubb wants the football they all want the football we get that but I've never seen anything where Jarvis, where it was, or excuse me, Odell, where it was a bad situation. And I thought it was really interesting on the telecast on Sunday, Chris Collinsworth brought that up in chatting with Al Michaels. And he said, I've heard that narrative. And he said, I don't know where it, where it's come from. I went back and watched every play when Odell was on the field. And he said, I can tell you that that narrative is false. He said, Odell didn't do anything except exactly what he was supposed to do. He blocked downfield. He ran his routes. He did everything he was supposed to do. And then Collinsworth said, and I never saw Baker try to throw him, force him the ball. And he said, so everybody can talk about that narrative. He said, it is false. It doesn't exist because I looked at it all and he knows more about it than I do. And he didn't see it. He said, it was not on tape. And I thought, well, that's more than good enough for me. It certainly confirms what I've thought all along. And so I don't expect any issues with the two of them, Andy. In fact, this – and I, it, it, did I, I just called you Andy, didn't That's I? okay. Sorry. It's like we're doing oh, your show. We're I, good. I, I, I talked four hours a day with Andy Mask, <laughs> and I'm talking 40 minutes here with you, Davey. So there you go. But my, my thought is – and I, I, I sound like a broken record on this – I'm so – optimistic about this team and so anxious to see different aspects of this team that I just throw that into it. I want to see Odell with Baker. I I do. I want to see it. So why wouldn't it work? You have a a really good young quarterback who is, is progressing nicely and you have one, a guy who was on his way to the hall of fame before injuries hit. And I think if he can repeat what he did his first several years, he's a hall of famer. The other thing I would say, guys like Odell Beckham and, and Jarvis Landry and Nick Chubb, they want the ball in their hands because they're convinced that gives their team the best chance of winning. That's how they got to the yeah. level that they've gotten to. It's yeah. it's not a selfish thing. It's a, I can help us. I am most equipped to help us win. So it, I don't think it's a negative yeah. thing at all. All right. One of the areas that we haven't touched on yet is kicker. So Chase McLaughlin's still there. Um, the... Detroit Lions cut both of their kickers, and one of them will be very familiar. Here's a tweet from Danny Rogers. 
So Zane Gonzalez, former seventh round pick yeah. of the Browns, Randy Bullock, longtime kicker from the Bengals, also cut. Uh, to those names, I will add Nick Falk, um, longtime kicker for the Patriots. Brett Mayer from the Saints, who's pretty effective. Eddie Pinheiro, Joey Sly. So those are some names of some kickers that are out there. Do you think the Browns look at one of those or multiple of those veterans to bring in, or is it Chase McLaughlin's gig here? In Kansas City on September 12th, Chase McLaughlin's your kicker. Can and it? if he's not, man, they didn't like him at all. <laughs> that's, <laughs> and that's, that's, that's still a possibility. You know, Dave, that's, man, I, I was feeling just fine. And then he pushed that extra point at the end of the game that kind of got swept under the rug. And that thing was so far right, it was unbelievable. Uh, I, I'm giving, the guy was with y'all, Cam, give him a chance. He almost hit the 56, 57 yarder right before halftime. Yep. I would give him a chance because those names you, you reeled off, Dave, most of them will still be available after week one. Yeah, th that's fair enough. But yeah, that, that extra point that looked like a slider tailing away from the center of the goalpost <laughs> was, was not exactly what we were looking for on the point after. And, and, and there are going to be games that come down to the kicking game for yeah. the Browns and Don't important games. You're trying to scare me, aren't you? <laughs> All right, but but you would give Chase McLaughlin first crack and and uh, and go into the regular season with it. Well, and I think they will because they didn't bring anybody in after Cody Park. He went out. I, I think if they weren't happy with with Chase, they would have brought someone in to compete with him. At least that's what my gut tells me. And since they didn't do that, I'm guessing they're going to roll into the season with him. However, Zane Gonzalez was really good two years ago for Arizona. Mm -hmm. I think he hit about 88% of his field goals that dropped last year. Uh, Randy Bullock was good in Houston. He was good in Cincinnati, but you know, this is the type of guy who's been around forever. And I believe Nick Folk is going to be 37 this year and he's consistent, but okay. Just give him a cloth the, the the job and let him see what he can do. And if, if he's terrible in week one, go get another one. Unfortunately, they're disposable. And that's, you know, yeah, that's life you as want an to NFL. get to the NFL, be, yeah, become a really good kicker, but know that you might have a short shelf life. Yeah, no question about it. Well, the other thing to keep in mind is there's two weeks between um, cut down day and, uh, yeah. and the first game. So you could see some, we'll keep our eye out in Berea and see if we have uh, any kicker auditions uh, going on out in Berea. Jeff Phelps, uh, 92.3 The Fan, Browns uh, Radio Network. As always, thanks for the time and the insight. Appreciate it. Mr. Bacon, always my pleasure. Thanks, buddy. All right, Jeff Phelps, uh, make sure you listen to him. 92.3 The Fan, 10 to 2, uh, Monday through Friday, and he's also post and halftime on the Browns Radio Network. We're going to step aside, take a quick time out. We will continue talking Browns. Tim Bielek, reporter for The Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com, will join us. Sports for CLE will be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. Back to new friends, new classroom, and learning new things. Back to wearing shoes, man, like real shoes. Back to rushing to class. Back to having questions. Lots of questions. Back to vending machine dinners. Back to too much caffeine. Too late at night. But feeling like it was a night well spent. Back to pursuing your dreams and taking control of your future. Come back to go forward. Try C, where futures begin. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine.
continue talking Browns football on NFL Cut Down Day. So Shannon Sharp, uh, FS1's Undisputed. Are the Browns a Super Bowl contender? I don't. Um, I'm not even picking them to win the division. I'm going to take the Ravens because I trust Lamar Jackson more than I trust Baker Mayfield. Skip, I can make a case, talent for talent, roster top to bottom. They might be the most talented roster. When you look at their offensive line, look at their running back, look at their skill positions, look at that defense and what they upgraded, they can go toe-to-toe with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Agreed. But <laughs> you know what it comes down to in this league, Skip. It always has and it always will. You're not running your way to the Super Bowl because what's going to happen, they're going to force you. Eventually, a team will say, you know what? We're not going to let you run it. We're going to play you man-to-man. We're going to make you make throws in the tight windows. Can you do that on a consistent basis? Let's welcome in Tim Bielek, for, uh, reporter for Cleveland.com and The Plain Dealer. Tim, I'm okay with that. I, as, as the Browns go, if you want Baker Mayfield to beat you, I think he's going to be able to beat you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... You look pretty pretty good to me on Sunday night, especially that second possession, that throw to Kadell Hodge for the touchdown. Certainly, certainly should get everybody, you know, that's in Cleveland excited about what he can do in year two. And I feel like there is still some residual, you know, after effects of what happened in 2019 when that whole thing kind of came apart a little bit uh, with Freddie Kitchens and that whole, you know, problems they had on that side of the football. He clearly turned it around in the second half of 2020. I thought he looked very good in the playoffs. I think Baker certainly at this point, he seems underrated to me. Like he's a guy that now that he's in a system for the second year in a row, now that he's got this slew of talent at the skill positions, this offensive line, which should only get better this season with another year of continuity. He's never had this before. So we don't know exactly what his ceiling is going to be. If he goes and puts up about 40 touchdowns this season, I don't know how many people would be surprised by that. I think we just have yet to see a consistent season. I think this is the year we do, and I think there's some pretty big things in store if he's able to be as consistent as as you know people hope he can be. And again, I don't I don't want to beat up on the national media because I think part of the thing is is unless you are following specifically the Browns and are that into it, you don't realize um, the dysfunction that he's had and that he's been through different offenses and some offenses that quite frankly didn't make sense when you watched them you know what they were trying to do this offense makes sense I, you, you kind of if you pay attention to it you get where they're going you see what sets up what so I, I understand where the national narrative might not catch up I think it's going to catch up pretty quickly um, with what Baker Mayfield I with what I expect him to do in this offense um, let me ask you this what area of this team are you most excited to see? Um, uh, I know most people are going to say, you know, defensive end, just to watch Miles Garrett and Jadavian Clowney just go and wreak havoc on quarterbacks. But for those of us, you that have been watching the show, what, that when I've been on, you know I'm a big skill positions guy. I love to watch, you know, guys in the perimeter get the work done. And I think this receiver core is going to be a lot of fun to watch. I mean, we've seen the workout videos of Odell Beckham Jr., what he's been able to do coming off the ACL, almost superhuman level type of recovery from OBJ as far as his health is concerned. He looked pretty good in the warmups on Sunday night, catching a one-handed pass. I'm excited to see what he can do in a second season of this offense, what Donovan Peoples-Jones can do now that, you know, he's kind of been the training camp offensive MVP he could potentially be the third receiver creating another athletic mismatch. And then you, when you have guys like Rashard Higgins as your fourth receiver and Anthony Schwartz as a fifth receiver, you know, that's a, that's a very deep room and I'm very excited to see how those guys rotate in and out. I'm very excited to see, you know, how defenses want to try to match up with that. And, you know, you mentioned the balance of the offense that, you know, you're going to, that teams are going to play heavy on the, on the run because of what Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt can do. If you do that, be careful because these are receivers that can make plays on you, as we as we saw all last season. And they do have the deep threat now, and with Beckham being back, and, and Schwartz has you know, literally world class speed. I'm excited the defensive line just because you've got Garrett and Clowney, and, and I want to see those two. But the the interior of that defensive line has been so good um, in the preseason and, and and throughout camp, and that's without having Garrett and Clowney on the outside. 
Um, so I, I really want to see that line kind of get after the quarterback, and, and um, it will be a welcome change to watch a defensive line if they can do that. Um, what free agent additions do you think will have the biggest impact for the Browns this year? I started right off with John Johnson. You know, we saw how much of a problem the safety position was a year ago for the Browns, even after trade for Ronnie Harrison. You stabilized one position, but you still had problems with the other. And Johnson, you get a guy who's a very good leader who who does a lot of, of very good different things. We got a little taste of that on Sunday night. Uh, he's, a defense, he's a captain back there, essentially, although he's not going to be wearing the green dot. Anthony Walker will be. So I think there's going to be a lot to watch with Johnson. I'm fascinated to see that. Malik Jackson also stands out to me as an underrated addition. You know, as good, as much as we talk about pass rush on the outsides of the defensive line, what makes quarterbacks' life more lives more miserable than anything is when you get that interior pressure. When you can create a pass rush up the middle where a quarterback's supposed to feel the safest in the pocket, if you create that consistently, you're going to rattle a lot of quarterbacks. And Malik Jackson has done that throughout his career. Tim Bielek, reporter for the Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com. And I'm going to step aside, take a quick time out. On the other side of the break, uh, we hear from another national pundit who thinks the Browns are a Super Bowl contender. Plus, uh, who does CBSSports.com staff think will win the AFC North? Sports for CLE will be right back. Stay with us. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students kindergarten through 12th grade can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. We continue talking Browns football here on Sports for CLE. So uh, last segment we heard uh, from Shannon Sharp, FS1's Undisputed. Uh, this time, Skip Bayless, are the Browns Super Bowl contenders? Same show. I got the Browns not only going to the Super Bowl, but winning this division because they are as loaded as the Bucks are on paper, except for the quarterback. Yes. And yet, I do believe in Baker Mayfield. I told you ahead of that draft, I would take him one overall, and in a shock to many people, they did. Yeah. And I believe he will continue to back that up because right before your very eyes, and I'm not saying he's Tom Brady or will ever be close to Tom Brady, he grew up last year over the last, what was it, maybe 11 games that he played mm -hmm. without Odell Beckham Jr. Well, Odell's and I don't back. think there was any coincidence. So my only cause for pause here Ain't no cause for is pause. Odell. And I hope he can blend back into this mix. He's obviously supremely gifted. Yep. And maybe he's grown up a little bit. Maybe he's been humbled a little bit. Maybe he's sort of seen the force for the been humbled. He's been hurt. He's been he's injured. Been hurt. Okay. So once he gets that back, and I believe he's back. And Tim, I, I don't think Odell's ever been a problem. We were talking about that last thing. Odell's the kind of guy, he wants the ball because he thinks he gives you the best opportunity to win. But Brown's serious Super Bowl contender, I'm saying yeah. Are you in on it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw this team get to the second round of the playoffs with a, very, a defense that, you know, safe to say, it is not very good. And we saw the philosophy of the offseason, which was they simply just reloaded on that side of the football, not just in free agency, but drafting Greg Newsom. It seems like he's going to start right away. Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa, who's really come on, you know, after, you know, missing the first couple of days of camp after testing positive for COVID. If, you, if that defense is even just kind of middle of the road with what we think the offense is going to be, there's no reason they're not a top challenger to the Chiefs for the AFC, and it, if not the number one challenger. Because you look at the other two teams in the, in the mix for it, when it comes to teams like Buffalo, obviously great defense, great passing game, but they're very, they really don't have much of a run game. And Baltimore is kind of the opposite. We know they have a, a running game. When you have Lamar Jackson, you're going to have a run game. That defense has taken a couple of hits, but still is good. But they don't really have a consistent passing. And the Browns kind of have both. We know how balanced they are on offense. 
how far they go is just going to come down to how good this defense plays, you know, in November, December, and possibly January and February. And the one thing I would say about the defense is be patient, Browns fans, because they haven't had a lot of time on the field. And um, I, I think that's – I didn't want to admit it early, but since they've been so kind of banged up, I think it's going to be a, a, a little bit of a work in progress on the defensive side of the ball. CBSSports.com staff, um, to almost to a man, a significant advantage. Um, pick the Browns to win the AFC North. Uh, reaction to that one? I'm not surprised by that, especially because we saw that, you know, the Ravens lost J.K. Dobbins for the season to the torn ACL. Obviously, horrible news for Dobbins. You know, I'm sure that's a, hopefully he comes back okay in 2022 for Baltimore. But with him gone, that significantly weakens Baltimore's running back room. I mean, you've got Gus Edwards, who will be the number one back right there with Lamar Jackson, not nearly as explosive a player as J.K. Dobbins is. And then you have the questions on the offense – when it comes to the passing game, there's changes on the offensive line. We saw them lose some guys on defense in free agency, particularly Matt Judon going elsewhere. I wouldn't put it past Baltimore to win the division because of Lamar Jackson, because how just special he is. But it seems like the way the Browns have gone about this offseason, trying to fix the defense, the one thing they wanted to do was improve the speed of the defense. And I think in today's NFL, it's about speed. Do you have the defensive guys who can fly around the field, react to whatever's going on in front of them, and make plays quickly and close down on whatever's going on in front of them? And the answer right now looks like they certainly have that ability. And you need speed against Lamar Jackson. We saw just what he did to the Browns last year, especially on Monday Night Football. Just they didn't have the speed to contain him. Now it seems like they do have the speed to at least slow him down a little more. And you figure if they can at least split with Baltimore, they got a good shot to take the division. Yeah, and again, uh, Baltimore, even though they don't have J.K. Dobbins, uh, they're a really good football team. They'll find a way. Um, John Harbaugh is a really good football coach. So um, it, it'll be fun to watch uh, the Browns, Ravens, and don't forget about the Steelers in that AFC North. All right, um, the Athletic came out with an all-under-25 team. And the Browns have uh, somebody on that list, Denzel Ward. Um, what do you think of Ward being on the all under 25 team? It's kind of surprising. It feels like he's been around on the Browns for a while and that he's only 24 years old. It's kind of interesting how that kind of plays out. But, you know, we saw Ward just have an immediate impact when he came to the Browns, was an immediate starter. You know, he pl he's played very well when healthy. But I do think, you know, the injuries have been – you know, a question is like, can he stay healthy? He's obviously put up good numbers, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, what he's been able to do when he's out on the field. But the question for him has been durability. If he can stay out there for a full 17 games and the playoffs, I think there's no telling how good he could be among the league's best corners. We know he's athletic. We know he can be very good one-on-one -on -one despite his lack of size, but he's the number one guy in the secondary. He's And for good reason, he's been good. It's just going to come down to how much he's out there. We always talk about the number one ability for a player is availability. Yeah, and, and he's missed uh, multiple games. I think it's four or five games each of the last two years. Um, he did bulk up, try to put on some muscle to be more durable. So um, we'll see how that goes. Missed some of camp, which with, with you know vague soreness was the reason. So he again you, you want him out there because he is a guy that makes a difference uh, on the defense for the browns of course and you look at the rest of the secondary they're going to need denzel ward to play really well because you look at the other corner greg newsom is a rookie right now Br Brady williams going into his second season of play he missed all of last season with a shoulder and he was in very inconsistent um in his rookie season then they signed troy hill who i think is better in the slot than on the outside could certainly play on the outside possibly if need be but while we're while newsom is certainly impressed in camp they need denzel ward to be healthy for as many games as possible especially while newsom gets used to the speed of the game gets used to playing against these receivers and they're going to see plenty of good ones throughout the season especially in their own division with what he got in pittsburgh and cincinnati when it comes to receivers, they're going to need Denzel to be healthy, and they're going to need these young guys, these other guys, to really rise up and complement him, so he doesn't have all that pressure on him. Tim Bielek, reporter for the Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com, as always. Tim, appreciate the time and the insight. Thanks very much.
Got it. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. Tim Bielek from The Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com. That'll do it for this edition of Sports for CLE. We will see you back here tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Hayden Grove from The Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com, our scheduled guest. We will see you then, 4 o'clock, right here on Sports for CLE.